a discussion course based upon the book Reversing Hermon, Session 4, The Watcher's Sin and Jesus' Birth. The learning objectives for this session include the following. At the end of this session, we shall be able to understand how Jesus' birth ensures the Watcher's defeat. To explain astrotheology from the First and New Testaments, and to defend the 11th of September, 3 BCE date for Jesus' birth. By way of summary, we shall be looking at how Jesus undoes what the Watchers did. By his birth, death, and resurrection, now the Watchers did not understand this. And even the Apostles expected Jesus to do this immediately. Whereas astrotheology demonstrates Jesus' victory over evil and chaos. We read this in 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 8. We impart a secret, hidden wisdom of God which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified Jesus, the Lord of glory. Now the rulers here are the spirit beings, whom we call watchers, who deceive governments and people. Reading in Romans 10, 13 through 18. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? We call upon the name of the Lord. In the First Testament, the Lord is Yahweh, whereas in the New Testament, he has become Jesus. To be saved mainly means to be raised back to life at Jesus' return and then to enjoy God's kingdom forever. Reading Romans 10, 13 through 18. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word about Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Where did they hear? And how did they hear? We read in Psalm 19, 1 through 4, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Note the pattern by which the sun rises and sets, following an imaginary line called the ecliptic. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. The term translated voice in the Greek Old Testament was phlogos, meaning sound, whereas in the Hebrew Masoretic text, the verb is meaning a line or string, a measuring. Is this a reference to the ecliptic, the astronomical path that the sun and moon follow? And what did Paul mean when he said, they heard? And what New Testament evidence is there for this? We read in Genesis 1, 14 through 15. Let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be light in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. 
Now the term translated seasons in Hebrew, mo'ed, refers to any appointed time or period of time, season, and is used for the festivals, the biblical holidays, that is, the sacred events. The constellation Virgo, meaning the Virgin, every year in the constellation Virgo, the sun appears in her middle, approximately in her womb, between 150 and 170 degrees along the ecliptic. For a 20-day period, evoking the mother goddesses for pagans, but reminding Jews that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. We notice the placement of the constellations Leo, the lion, Virgo, the virgin, and Hydra, the dragon. On a particular date, September 11, 3 BCE, the king star Regulus and the king planet Jupiter aligned within Leo, whilst Venus, Mercury, and the Sun and the bright star Spica aligned along Virgo the Virgin and the Moon lay under her feet. We read in Revelation 12, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains, and the agony of giving birth. Now, whom does the woman represent? We shall return to this question. Stellarium, astronomical software, for the concerned dates, tracks the movement of the moon through Leo through the Virgin continuing downwards beneath her feet on the 13th of September. The Gentiles honored Regulus as the king star and Jupiter as the king planet. As we have seen, these came together in Virgo for a 90-minute period when the moon was at Virgo's feet for 80 minutes, as viewed from Western Asia, the ancient Near East, on one particular date, September 11th, 3 BCE. Now there are different views as to what is meant by the sun, moon, and stars. Some have suggested that these represent the patriarch Jacob, his surviving wife, and their twelve sons. Others prefer Abraham, Sarah, and all Israel with its twelve tribes. Others have said, no, this is God, Jesus Christ, and all Christians, a doubtful interpretation. Whereas some insist, no, this actually refers to the physical, astronomical sun, moon, stars, and planets as viewed from Earth. There are also various views as to whom the woman represents. These include... Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary, Queen of Heaven, or Mary, Queen of Earth, or the Virgin Mother mentioned in Isaiah 7.14. Perhaps it represents national Israel. Most likely it refers to faithful Israel who both gave us the Messiah and suffered for his name. In Revelation 12, we continue reading, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, 
and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Now, stars here likely represent good angels abused by the dragon. That is, in Revelation 12, there is a battle between the good angels and Satan, who casts a third of these down to the earth. They will, of course, return to heaven. Continuing on then in Revelation 12, And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child he might devour it. Who is this dragon? Who is the woman? And who is the child? If you are meeting in a group, discuss together who these are. Continuing in Revelation 12. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Six and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. The child being caught up, a likely reference to Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And he is to rule. In order to rule over the nations, he must replace what other rulers than the watchers. The Romans sacked the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD, destroying the temple. The woman who fled, there are various views. Some suggest Israel's exodus from Egypt. Others, certain Israelite prophets who had to flee from evil kings, or faithful Israelites fleeing from Roman invaders, perhaps Christians escaping from Jerusalem to Pella in AD 66, as Jesus had commanded them to do. Others say, well, these may be Christians or Jews escaping from a yet future tribulation. In Psalm 2, 7 through 9, we read this. I will tell of the decree. The Lord Yahweh said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. We understand that this reference to a son gave rise to the expression Son of God, which became a messianic title amongst Jews. Let's compare a pagan text. What foe has risen up against Baal? What enemy has risen against the rider of the clouds? Surely I destroyed Yam, the sea, beloved of El, God. Surely I made an end of Riva, the mighty God. Surely I lifted up the dragon. I destroyed the crooked serpent, the tyrant with the seven heads. This language occurs later in the book of Isaiah. Regarding the sea monster and chaos, Yahweh defeated these at creation. You, Yahweh, divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You pierced the dragon. However, the sea monster and chaos are yet again to be defeated at the end time. In that day, the Lord with his heart and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan the fleeing serpent, Leviathan the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. Isaiah was referring to the pagan Leviathan to which the book of Enoch in chapter 60 alludes. Leviathan, the female monster, alongside of the male behemoth. 
Now, there are other astronomical events providing us with astrotheology. Consider Hydra. Which other constellations? Well, not Draco, the dragon, which is found near the North Pole, but Hydra, formerly called Scorpia, which was divided from Libra by the Greeks in about 237 BCE. And the constellation Leo the Lion, recalling the verse, Weep no more, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered. About Leo the Lion constellation, Judah is a lion's cub, he stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness, who dares rouse him. The scepter kingship shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. And to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Thus the Hebrew calendar is divided into twelve months, along the winter and summer solstices, and the vernal and autumnal equinoxes. That year begins on the first day of the month of Tishri. Other things that occur on that date include the first day of creation, with its harvest in the Garden of Eden, Noah's 600th birthday, the start of the Great Flood, which put an end to the Nephilim, the Jewish New Year beginning on Rosh Hashanah, and the start of the Harvest Festival, compare Revelation 14, 14 through 19, where the Son of Man returns and harvests the earth, it was the inauguration day for new kings in Israel and the expected renewal of creation. Hence, the birth of Jesus on the 11th of September, 3 BCE, occurred on the 1st of Tishri. Orion and Pleiades constellations. Amos said, he who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth, the Lord Yahweh is his name. More about Pleiades and Orion. God who made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades, God will not turn back his anger. Beneath him bowed the helpers of Rahab. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades, or loose the cords of Orion? A famous painting of Orion. Orion was considered to have been a giant, who retired to the island of Crete, where he became a hunting companion of the goddess Artemis. After his death, he was placed amongst the stars as the constellation Orion. What does this have to do with Jesus? Note that the term giant is the Greek word used to translate Nephilim. In an ancient Aramaic Targum, that is, translation of Job chapter 38, found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls. In Dead Sea Scroll 11Q, Targum Job, an Aramaic translation of Job, the word translated Orion is Nephila, from which is derived the Aramaic term Nephilim, adopted by the Hebrew Bible for the giants of old whose souls became the demons on earth. And now, in Mesopotamian astrology, Orion was the true shepherd of Anu, evoking the shepherd-ruler motif, kings being called shepherds of their people. So, 
In Ezekiel 34, 23, we read, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. This text was written while Ezekiel was in Mesopotamia, where the Jewish community believed that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. Now, did he mean a descendant of David or King David resurrected? In the future kingdom, there will be no more watcher rulers deceiving nations. Your assignment for next time is to read in the book Reversing Hermon, Chapter 5, The Watcher's Sin and Jesus' Genealogy. And please visit our website, reversinghermon.site, for other materials. Thank you.